five reasons the worst is yet to come in 2020. Stack hard, people. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Yankee Stacking. I really appreciate you checking out my video, my channel. You know, if you like the video at the end, like, subscribe, that would be fantastic. And fair warning, <laughs> there will be rants. <laughs> as my subscribers and viewers know, you know, I don't characterize myself as an optimist. Neither do I characterize myself as a pessimist. I try to be a realist. I base my opinions largely on facts and history. And I don't sugarcoat things. I, I, you know, I try not to overly sensationalize them either, but I'm going to give you my five reasons why we are not out of the woods. And I believe the worst is yet to come. I'm sure there's more than five. That's enough for me to swallow. I don't know about you, but let's just stick with five. Okay. And, and, and it starts with this. I think we're in an unprecedented state of denial. I mean, just look at the stock market. It's gone up. In fact, the NASDAQ is now in positive territory for the year. Think about it. We have just experienced the, the most violent shock to our way of life and economic well-being. And the markets have risen. But the markets are not the economy, folks. And I think there are several reasons for this insanity. I'll just list them off real quick. I, I, I think there's a bottom feeding going on, especially by millennials that maybe think this is their last chance to get in while the getting's good. Okay. I think that may be unwise, but it is. I, I, I think there is a rush to a very small uh, segment of, of uh, companies in stock especially the fangs, especially Amazon, right? Because everybody is ordering online. But that is not indicative of the broader health, if you will, of the uh, stock market. I think the Federal Reserve is, is showing insane uh, support for the markets. We're going to touch on that later. But I also think it's a case of normalcy bias. We are so desperate to believe that everything will be fine real soon maybe we'll go out on the town friday night enjoy the theater I, i'm gonna go back to my office real soon we'll catch a game at the stadium yeah that's it we'll have a we'll have a bunch of people over to our house for a big party and we're hearing that our wonderful powerhouse of an economy is just gonna roar back as soon as you know states get past a couple of minor thresholds they open everything back up again. You know, nothing's going to stop us. In fact, it's already getting better, Yankee. We're fine. Really. Wrong. That's simply denial. Th this is not going to be a V-shaped recovery. This is, this is not the end of our problems. This is now an economic disaster, and it's just the beginning. Now, I'm not a professional financial advisor. I have to say that all the time, right? Do your own research. Make your own decisions. You know, but, but for the record, let me say also that I am not an anti-American, doomsday-wishing YouTuber that wants to see our nation fail. Point is, in some ways, we have already failed. What we need to do is learn and to become stronger. And there are several lessons that I'm going to enumerate rapid fire at the end of this video. So, you know, listen to the whole thing. There's a lot that I want to cover here. And at the end, I hopefully there'll be some encouragement for you. So the first reason why I am convinced that the worst is yet to come this year is that credit is seizing up. I've said this before, but we've had extremely loose lending standards, okay, that, that, that really help, you know, create this uh, uh, debt-fueled booms that we have over and over again. But now lending standards are going to 
go completely in the opposite direction real fast. Case in point, for all new home loans that Chase Bank is giving out, they're now requiring a credit score of at least 700 and a down payment of at least 20%. 700 credit score, 20% down. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. Those are those are good things. We, we need to have higher credit worthiness. And, and we need to put more of our savings down when we buy a house. But, you know, if, if you own your house now or have a mortgage, would you have been able to get approved for a mortgage under these new Chase standards? Uh, I'm, I'm talking to some savvy viewers out there. I know. <laughs> so maybe. <laughs> Probably you could. But an estimated quarter of all home buyers last year wouldn't have. You know, when Mrs. Yankee and I bought our house, we had saved for many, many years. In fact, I was thinking about it uh, you know, back in college. I remember a lot of my friends were buying, you know, expensive cars, uh, taking extravagant trips to Europe and elsewhere. I worked and I saved. <laughs> and then when I graduated, I worked and I saved some more. And when I bought my first house, our only house actually, I put 20% down and uh, we paid off the mortgage about 20 years later. But since the uh, global financial crisis, thanks to the Fed's you know, dovish approach with interest rates, lending got crazy again. But not now, no. <laughs> As you can see with what Chase is doing, and, and, and Chase is not alone. Most major mortgage lenders have now tightened up the exact same way. Home equity loans, <laughs> they're hitting the proverbial brick wall. I, I personally have a home equity loan. I use it for an arbitrage with my private mortgage lending. I did a video on it. So in short, I have a 4% loan with my bank and I'm earning 8% with PML. So, you know, I get a 4% income stream with very low risk. Anyway, <laughs> forget that now. Uh, no more HELOCs. So credit for home buying is seizing up. And if you remove about a quarter of all buyers from the marketplace moving forward, what do you think happens to the housing market? It crashes, folks. <laughs> but wait, there's more with what's happening to credit during this crisis. The credit card industry is seizing up as well. Standards have really tightened for new customers. I, I, I don't know if you know this. Or, or have noticed this, I should say. But in some instances, people are having their credit card limits reduced. They've even had their credit cards canceled sometimes, just like it happened during the Great Recession. Have you seen that? Put a, put a comment down there below if you've seen that with your own credit cards. Okay, so anyway, if you think, all right, that won't crush our propped up U.S. economy, well, Either you think that America can do no wrong and this bogus charade can go on forever, or you just haven't been paying attention and you don't know how our economy really works. I'm going to tell you right now. Our economy is consumer-driven. No, no, actually, check that. Our economy is consumer-debt-driven. Consumers must have access to easy credit. Must, must, must. No debt, no spending, no economy. Period. Now, again, <laughs> a lot of you watching are stackers, all right? You, you know what real money is. You've probably tried to be fiscally responsible. Uh, many of you, if not most of you, are uh, careful to live within your means. I get that. <laughs> but just like your stacking is, you know, by and large an aberration in our society, a, a weird pastime <laughs> at best, so is the responsible saving and spending habits that you probably have. See, you stackers, you and I, we're anomalies. Oh, 
I want gold. Have you seen that? And he gets in his head that he's going to buy bullion. Why? Because he doesn't have a wife and a bunch of children running around the house. He's got time to order silver bullion. All right? Who else is going to do such a zany thing as have bullion sitting in their house? Nancy, you just analyzed it correctly. It's somebody who is a so lovely rich white guy. That's who That's orders right. silver uh, bullion. And responsible debt, uh, paying off your balances every month on time. That is not what makes this hideous fake economic engine run. But it is sadly how it works. Okay, so with this seizing up of wild credit, there is absolutely no way in the world that we are going back to anything remotely resembling normal anytime soon. All right, so that was number one. All right, a little long-winded, I apologize. Here's number two. Job losses are growing You've, you've heard the news, I'm sure. More than 33 million Americans have already lost their jobs. And economists are projecting millions more will lose their jobs in the weeks ahead. You, you probably saw just this past week, I think Thursday, 14.7% unemployment rate. Hogwash. Even the Labor Department is saying, well, you know, maybe that was a bit understated. It's probably closer to 20 yeah, no, it's even more than that. Based on uh, the most recent filings for unemployment as of the recording of this video, uh, which is Saturday, it's over 50 million. We're talking around a quarter of able-bodied Americans, 25% when you factor in things like, uh, you know, people not looking for a job anymore. I mean, think about that, all right? It's extremely difficult to be looking for a job right now. And in fact, many are making more than what they did when they were working. That isn't stimulus, by the way, folks. That is welfare. You don't stimulate a national shutdown. Okay, you, you, you fund it. Where was I? Oh, yeah, 25%. That, that is what I think is more realistic uh, when you factor in uh, what's going on. And I think that's going to go up much higher. And a lot of those jobs are service sector jobs, the majority of which are just simply not coming back. This all goes counter to a lot of uh, what you hear uh, in the mainstream media and from our government administration. They claim that you know once we open all the doors, businesses are going to just hire everyone back. No, <laughs> that's not going to happen. And, of course, that assumes that we get this whole medical thing under control. And I have intentionally avoided talking about anything specifically related to the medical crisis. I won't say the name <laughs> because of YouTube. Uh, I, I haven't talked about it. I haven't talked about the likelihood of, you know, potentially an encore coming back later this year. That's not what this video is about, and I'm not going to go there. But, yeah. Jobs, jobs, folks, it's not going to change anytime soon. So that was the second reason. Let's get to the third reason why I think we are not free and clear. <laughs> okay, and that is bankruptcies. Guys, they're going to explode on the scene soon. I remember it happening during the uh, global financial crisis back in 08. <laughs> it usually takes couple rounds of bad earnings, you know, a lack of new credit. And when it starts, it turns into a flood quickly. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's what's coming. I, you, you might say, Yankee, hold on a second here. The Fed's going to take care of all that. They're just going to, you know, throw more loans at companies. You know, shoot, they won't even require them to be repaid. Yeah, problem solved. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm not saying they won't do some of that. In fact, they're doing that now. They're actually propping up companies right now that they that they warned about, they, that they said were, were too risky, not viable zombie companies before the crisis. So yeah, I, I get that, that they will do some of that, but they won't be able to keep up with all of them. Just maybe, maybe a, a few too big to fail ones. 
But even that is unsustainable. Take Boeing, for example. All right. Their uh, non-bailout bailout has disaster written all over it. You know, I was listening to um, uh, CNBC uh, last week. I don't know if you know about uh, uh, Kevin O'Leary. He's from Shark Tank. He was on NCNBC. He, he was one of those talking heads that was saying, hey, it's time to buy Boeing. <laughs> buy Boeing? His logic was this. He said that the Fed would never let it go bankrupt. And, you know, why fight the Fed, right? If that doesn't scream moral hazard, I don't know what, what does. He's, he, he's basically saying, buy a stock in a company that desperately needs to restructure under bankruptcy protection and, and get a whole new uh, competent management. That's it. Go ahead. Bite this piece of crap. Because, hey, you know, the Fed will jump in and take care of it. Wow, that is just so dangerous. Guys, bankruptcies must happen to purge the system of non-viable companies. That's how we get better, guys. But, you know, I believe it's going to happen in record amounts soon. And I don't think we're going to be able to bail them all out. So that's the third reason. Uh, and now for the fourth. This one, this one's a good one. Lawsuits. Hmm. We don't hear much about this in the news, but a lot of companies are also going to be extremely hesitant, if you will, to, to uh, return to normal because of the threat of lawsuits. Claims have been filed against hospitals, uh, senior citizen facility, uh, uh, airlines, cruise lines, fitness chains, the entertainment industry. You know, as of last weekend, we had 771 medical crisis-related lawsuits already filed. By now, it could be, I don't know, over 1,000. That will be just the first wave of litigation challenging decisions made, you know, early on in the in the medical crisis by corporations, insurance companies, governments, you name it. And I personally know firsthand, firsthand, that executives are discussing the potential legal and regulatory issues surrounding any return to work. There's fear, guys. Fear over what could happen when a business opens its doors again to employees or customers. It's going to be exceedingly difficult to return to normal in our overly litigious American society. Expect tens of thousands of lawsuits over this crisis and expect it to clog our courts for the foreseeable future. So that is the fourth reason why I think we ain't seen nothing yet. And the fifth one, I think it's the biggest reason of them all. Societal fear. Simply put, Americans are so freaking afraid of this thing that a massive number of people have no intention of resuming normal economic patterns anytime soon. They are really scared. Now, whether you agree with this mindset or not, because I know I'm going to trigger some people here. Okay, so whether you think, you know, we're, 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 we're using our heads or just being a bunch of germaphobes, according to research, 40% of Americans plan to avoid public spaces unless absolutely necessary long after this medical crisis is over. 40%. In another survey, a 1,000 U.S. adults were asked how they envisioned everyday life after, again, this medical crisis is over. Over four in five, 82%, said they are now more aware of and concerned about cleaning protocols in public areas. That's a sea change in people's attitudes. Again, 
you may think <laughs> that this is a ridiculous overreaction. You, you may be furious at the closing of our economy. You may think that statistics are, are completely flawed and our you know, federal agencies are just not being truthful. Okay, fine. I get it. <laughs> but that's not the point. The point is, it's going to take a long, long time before a large segment of our population is comfortable going to a movie or, or, or a concert or a restaurant or a theme park or even a hotel. Now, the Yankee household hasn't canceled our uh, uh, summer vacation plans this, uh, you know, this year. Not yet. <laughs> But I do know people who have, including some in my extended family. And uh, who knows? Maybe we'll be tempted to cancel too. We're taking a wait-and-see approach. I don't want to jump the gun here. But it really does depend on how you know we're doing as a nation and how prepared and equipped our travel destination is and you know, keeping things sanitized and you know, keeping us safe. But how about just getting on a subway? or a bus, or a plane. How confident are we, really? I don't think we're really that confident uh, Confident yet. Again, I'm sure I'm going to get a pile of comments that say, you know, like, uh, um, I'm confident, Yankee. I don't, I don't even wear anything on my face. It's ridiculous. Now, have you seen this video, Yankee? <laughs> I just don't think the confidence is there. And, and speaking of planes, even perpetually optimistic Warren Buffett threw in the towel this month. He told Berkshire Hathaway investors that he sold his entire stake in the four largest airlines, uh, uh, American, uh, Del uh, Delta, Southwest, and United. He sees it. He, he, he sees a 95% a plunge in passengers, you know, billions of losses, a rush for new debt. He, he sees it. He knows it's going to take many, many years to undo this damage. So that's the last thing, societal fear. And it is a biggie. All right. That's, <laughs> those are the five reasons why I think uh, it's just not going to, it's not going to get better this year, folks. And I did promise you some good news, right? You're, you're like, wait a minute, Yankee, are you just going to leave us like this? No. <laughs> I, I think the biggest thing we can do is learn. I said that at the beginning of the video. We can learn, learn, learn. Like what? We, we can increase our savings. We can prepare for a rainy day. You know, we can maybe use this bear market rally to get some money out of the markets. There's a lesson for you. We can learn what real money is. Stacking silver and gold. We can reduce our debt. Personally, corporately, nationally, debt needs to go down. We can we can become less dependent on China. How's that? You know, it will take some time, but there's a lesson for us. We can reconsider how much we rely on our service sector economy. We can, we can start bringing back manufacturing to our shores once again. It's going to take a long time to do it. It's going to be painful. We may have to pay a little bit more for the stuff that we so you know enjoy getting, but it's so important we do it. We can live simpler, less materialistic, and more meaningful lives. How's that? And, and how about this? We can awaken spiritually as a nation. Tell me something. Hasn't our mortality been under a spotlight with this whole thing? Isn't that a lesson we can learn? We don't live forever. Oh, man, there are so many lessons just waiting to be learned out of this. And the very first one is to admit that we are not over. The collapse is still coming. Only then do I believe we will really, really be ready to take our medicine and get well. 
Well, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if, if you appreciated it too, hit the like. Maybe subscribe if you haven't. Check out my uh, description below. There are a lot of really uh, cool links down there. And again, I hope your day is a-okay.